Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, actually, it's night here, so good evening. Uh, welcome to another video in a series of videos where I cover another really useful tool. Now, if you were watching any of my other videos, you may have seen this icon. It's called, uh, and it's for a program called Title Card Maker. So the website uh, is titlecardmaker.com, and the application is by Colin Heist. And so what is it when, and why would you want this? Well, if you can kind of see the little carousel here that's going on, it basically automizes the creation of customized title cards for use in any sort of media server that you might have. So what is the title card? Well, it's very simple. You know, TV shows, right? How they have those little episode sort of, well, you know, the episode pictures on them. So like right here, you could see Mr. Robot and then you can see Ahsoka. It basically creates these, essentially these images per episode. And you can stylize it and all this cool stuff without literally having to use Photoshop. Now, when I first kind of started, my assumption was, you know, hey, what? Why wouldn't I just, you know, use Photoshop and, and all that? And, and, you know, it was explained to me that really this thing is more versatile than that. And it, it basically allows people to dynamically change title cards, you know, from another person with and customize it how they want to customize it with in terms of font color, kerning, you know, kerning for the text, uh, various other options if the if the specific uh, blueprint, you know, for the title card would allow it. So here you could see the sort of things you could cus customize the font, the size, the inner inner line spacing. And then also you can, there's, you could do certain complex things, but we're not going to get into that really. We're just going to kind of cover general use case and then the complex kind of stuff, which is, I would say, probably creating your own title card, even which for me is still incredibly complex because I am not an image magic expert at any any given rate, but uh, that would be in a separate video. And so let's, let's really take a look at what this is. So really it's pretty well explained here. It's just, Again, it's just creating these, uh, you can see these various designs, uh, thumbnail images for the specific, you know, episodes for anime. You can have kanji text appearing and really kind of some interesting stuff with, with this. And so, so how are we going to install this title card maker? Well, you can try going on community apps and you're going to see this. Do not install that. That is version one. Okay. I was a little confused because I went through a more complicated setup that I was doing video for, but then Colin explained, no, this is the command line. This is not, you know, it's not the GUI. So we don't want that one. Uh, nothing wrong with command line if you, if, you're, if you really prefer it over a nice GUI, but I mean, you know, I, I'm not command line averse myself, but if there's a GUI, I'm gonna grab the GUI. So. First things first, you're going to pop open your Windows store. No, you're going to pop open your app data directory in, on your Unraid device. And you're going to just kind of create a folder inside of it called config. I'm going to walk you guys through kind of what it's doing. So he's again, you can th this will be linked so you can follow along with the video. But, you know, for Windows, Linux, all this stuff, you're going to make essentially, you know, you're going to make a, first, you're going to make the directory that, you know, you're going to choose a directory where you want to install it. So for me, I chose app data. So what we did is we pull up this, this bad boy here and we go here real quick. And what we do is quite simply, we CD into whichever parent directory you want it in. For myself, I wanted it in here. And then what you're gonna do is, it's not free. So right here, I'm gonna stop you. 
you have to be a sponsor of the project, which will get you invited to a private GitHub repository. And then after being invited, you'll receive an email and accept the invitation to collaborate with that private GitHub repository. Then you're going to get a personal access token for GitHub. So yes, you do need a username for GitHub, obviously, and also to sponsor through GitHub sponsors. But once you get that, you're going to act, go under access token and grab a personal access token from the repo scope. Again, if you're not sure, just, you know, if you're not sure, look into it. Here's the in instructions given here. Go under settings, go under personal access token, uh, classic, generate a classic token, give it a note. Uh, and then of course, you know, select the scopes you'd like to grant. So again, if you want to access it from the command line, select repo. So if you don't do that, then it can only access public information. So you really want to make sure that you do it that way. And one of the things that you also want to note is that <clears throat> you want to save your personal access token somewhere because uh, I believe once it's created, you can't see it again. I might be horribly wrong, but I saved mine. Uh, and in any case, then you end up going to the app data directory and why did I choose the app data directory? Well, because everything for Docker and all the programs are under there. It's uh, It would be a little strange to not do that, right? So what I'm going to do here is, you know, I'm going to just quickly rename. This might break something, but I'm going to rename that to Web UI 2. Well, I don't need to do anything crazy. But let me just, once you do GitHub and this command right here, Okay. If you do GitHub, git, git clone, this command, it's going to ask you for your username. That That's going to be the username of GitHub, not the thing you used to log in. Don't put your email like I first did. Use the username. So you know how, you know, Colin Heist, GitHub is Colin Heist, you know, and if yours is Potato Head, make sure you put username, username Potato Head. Don't, don't type the email in. Once you do that, it's going to access, uh, it's going to ask you for your personal access token. You're going to enter that personal access token. It's going to do some wham, boom, bam magic. And it's going to create this title card maker web UI under, you guessed it, the app data directory. So I'm going to open this up. And so you're going to get this directory. Now you have two options. You can stick to the command line or you could try to win SCP into it to, to do it that way and see the permissions as well. Personally, uh, you, you know, you can attack this multiple ways. Um, personally, I think initially when I did it, I did it through win SCP, but you're going to eventually need the command line. So win SCP, you can make the config directory, make it, you know, chone R just means whatever the, whatever the users and group it is for all these, make it the same. For Unraid, it's probably going to be user 99 group or PGID, uh, process group ID, would be 100 being users. So by default, Unraid creates app data sort of structures through, through those groups. So that's what you want to do. And then, or you could run this command and, you know, here they, he tells you which one to do. Now, you have two options, okay? You can run it through Docker or non-Docker, okay? I'm not even gonna cover non-Docker because I'm not a fan of like, I'm just, I don't like the whole Python web, the, the you know, Python environment sort of thing. I, let's stick to Docker, okay? Docker, remember in the Docker video, I explained it's a production, it's not, a, it's a development environment, but a lot of people now use it for production level distribution because it is pretty stable at this point and all that good stuff. So once you have that directory and the config file created, you're going to make the Docker image. So what is that? And let me, again, if you watched the Docker video, you should know, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give a very simple summary just for those people who need a refresher, right? I'm not going to zoom just because you watched one video, you're an expert. At it. Remember, 
Docker makes things through essentially source repositories, okay? What Title Card Maker is doing is essentially creating a directory under app data that it that is functioning like a local repo, okay? It's not online, it's in your hard drive. So it utilizes something called Docker file to create an image. And it is that image that can create the virtual environment or the sandbox or the container that has the program. So if that didn't make sense, you may want to watch my Docker video again. But now one of the things that I want to mention that I didn't mention in the Docker video is the Docker compost right here, Docker compost. We, you know, you can definitely follow what Colin's doing here. That's not a problem. But I use Docker Compose and right here in the community center or community action. Well, you know, the community applications, you can see I use something called Docker Compose Manager, and this basically installs Docker Compose V2 on Unraid. And it has the web GUI or the web GUI. And we're just going to go ahead and again, I'm just going to show which one it is, but we're going to go ahead and uh, update this real quick. And we're going to just quickly update this on my end here and pretend like you're installing it on your guys end. And we'll just hit done. Okay, there we go. And it's been updated. So I go under Docker and then you get something like this that comes up essentially. Now, what I wanna overview very quickly is again, the Docker runs without the command line and it, it gives it a GUI sort of thing. So what I did was I added a new stack. This is okay, enter the name for the stack and I, whoop, and I called it title card maker. Now, if you hit okay, it will not put the, the there's a file that's called docker compose.yml that needs to be in wherever the title card maker web UI directory is. So how do we do that? So we hit advanced, the directory, you wanna point it to mount user app data right and i pointed it this directory title card maker web ui one of the things i want to really highlight is that make sure you don't do this you see how i put all caps but then if you look at the directory it's actually capital w lowercase so if you don't follow the exact capitalization it will make a separate directory called you know, web UI, all caps. So be careful of that and hit, hit okay. And you know, well, when you hit okay, right? When you hit okay on this one, it's going to essentially create this file and this Docker compost file. And then you can click this little settings thing. You can hit edit, edit stack. Now with a compose file, when I hit compose file, again, I gave, I pointed it at this directory when it first asked me under advanced. And then this is called Docker compost. So <clears throat> there's two ways to do this really. And I basically, there's two ways to do it. I did the image building right within, like from right within Docker compost. But realistically, I changed my approach on it. So what I would say is that you perhaps want to, you know, do it another way. Uh, and you do want to do it the way that it is mentioned here under not the Docker run, but because again, you, you're gonna have to, you know, switch sometimes grab an update right and the way you have to grab that update is you have to get pull so get pull 
from the command line. So that way it downloads the new, the Git, and then you can just literally build the image like this. Or you could do it like this, where you put the build command in a context. Context dot means in the same directory as Docker compose, right? So it's gonna use the source files from there. And the Docker file, we know it's called Docker file under you know the web UI folder, right? Right there. And it will build the image with this name. So you can run that. You can hit save changes and you can run it. It'll build the image. Then you could edit this again and then remove it. But you know, it, it, get, it can get tedious. At that point, you may as well just do the command line version for it. So I just wanted to show that option, but I did end up doing the command line myself eventually. And then you want to definitely copy kind of what I did here. So if we look at what Colin does is, you know, he kind of, shows what it would look like if you just ran it in the command line. But of course, you know, I think I gave a lot more context here that's more appropriate for Unraid and, and Docker Compose in general, a little more um, in terms of, you know, how to link it to an existing network, you know? So again, it's really important to remember that eight router analogy if you have all these containers, you don't want them each to look like they have their own router. You want one big router for all of them. So again, when when containers are on the same network, in, the, in my case, it's Dash Media Server. And then this is how I define it by saying, hey, look, look, there's already a network called Media Server and it's an external network. So don't try to make it. It will join that network. The good thing about that is, you know, when, when you start defining settings in title card maker, you don't have to really reference IP in any. And besides, it's a good habit just to do it either way. Even if the program doesn't need it, it doesn't hurt to have them all be able to essentially see each other in the same network. So again, set your time zone to whatever your time zone is up to you. Create the volumes path. Remember we, a Docker, Unless you define the volumes path, it will constantly keep creating the app data folder and deleting it every time you basically get rid of the container. So we want to stop that behavior by defining the persistent path. And then you just want to go up here and save the changes out. You want to go here. And then finally you want to do, you want to build your image. That's important. When you build the image, that's going to actually build. The image so in fact i'm going to actually do that myself and i'm going to kind of show you so kind of once again just uh do that do this because remember mine is already up oh, actually i'm going to go into title card maker always run these from within that directory get pull and see it, it asks me for my username so i'm going to enter that in so once you start downloading with your personal access token from within the directory, you will start seeing, again, all these changes going on here. Very cool stuff. And then it will have created the source files that we use to build the image. So now that I got the poll there, I need to create the image, right? So I want to create the new image. And so again, this is why it's like, okay, well, you know, we want to stay in, in, in that sort of command line here and of course it's going to do that of course it's going to do that okay so we're going to go docker build t title card maker latest oh, and current directory right so now it's going to start making the new image and it's going to start running all those commands and all that good stuff to make this new image. So it's again, it's re-downloading, uninstalling what it needs to uninstall here. It's gonna just reinstall and rebuild. So you're gonna get some scary like messages and you're like, oh no, that's completely fine. And we're just gonna let this run and finish. Now, once that image has been built, we need to transfer it into the container as an updated image. So. We're gonna go into our compost file. We're gonna just make sure it's good, save out the changes. And so since I already have an existing container called title card maker, I have to remove it along with the image. So we're just, don't hit update stack, go up. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna hit remove. And if you already have it installed, you can do remove image. If let's say your 
you have this installed and you need to update it later. So we're going to delete it because the persistent paths are saved under here, the volume mapping. And then, and then I'm just going to hit compose up and it's going to utilize that image to rebuild the container. Now, if it asks for the location of the icon, make sure to give it a GitHub link instead of doing what I first did, which was giving it like a PNG link to the local mount point because every time you remove the container to update title card maker it will remove that icon every time so just know that I'm pretty sure yep there's the icon right there from the github repo here's the this big long string just says media server for some weird reason it doesn't it doesn't resolve correctly which is annoying anyways Oh, and I added a web UI command, which would point to, you know, the local host according to the internal container. So here I'm going to just replace the wrong setting I had with the IP address directly and the port exactly as it's defined in the container. Hit OK. And now compose up because I did remove the container. It wasn't working before. And now we should be able to see Ta -da! title card maker. Oh my God, I thought this day would never arrive, but here it is. So this is Title Card Maker, and this is the interface. So the, the very first thing you wanna do when you see it, you're not gonna see what you see on my end, but you're gonna go to settings and you're gonna add connections, okay? Now under connections, you're gonna start adding your connections. So in my case, I did Plex, okay? And I added the Xplex token, okay, my local IP address. And then I added my sonar, both my 4K because I want 4K title cards and HD. So again, sonar, non-4K is obviously sonar HD. Um, and then once you have Plex associated, you will choose the associated media server and then the library names that are in Plex and the root paths of those libraries. So in this case, TV shows is TV HD, kids. You can do autofill libraries, but be careful. It's not a perfect thing. So if I were to do autofill libraries, you see kind of what's going on there, how it just copies that. So that's not really, if you hit save here, it's gonna have issues. It's gonna say, can't find this library, incorrect library, because it's trying to ask Plex, hey, do you have a TV HD library? No because Plex is just gonna say, well, I mean like, hey, I don't have a TV HD library, but Plex will say I have a TV shows library and a TV shows kids library. So you gotta, you can do autofill to fill in the paths here, but just make sure that these are correct. And again, persistent data, again, we're referencing, you know, the media library as Plex or you know, as Plex sees it and it also as Sonar sees it, right? Sonar also sees these root paths as data forward slash media forward slash this. And it's really, really crucial to make sure whatever the data on the inside of these containers are, they can all see each other's, you know, folders the same way. So, so once you've got that, you know, all your stuff set up, you can go under here. And you know, you can define your episode data source and image source priority. Title card ma uh, maker represent, uh, title card <laughs> maker recommends Sonar, but if you don't have Sonar, then Plex. So in my case, I'm just doing Sonar. Now for image source priority, never just put Plex. Uh, in here, you can see I put Plex. Uh, you wanna do TMDB, because if you already have a title card and you're trying to change your title card design, it's gonna try to grab the source from Plex and be like, uh-oh, there's a Plex type. So now, next up, we can choose a default card type that will apply to any show that you import. Uh, this is the standard one. Uh, and so I can show you an example of adding the series manually. And we're gonna cover automatic imports of series. So for manual, so if I were to add, you know, Frasier, I go search for Frasier. I say, let's add Frasier. Here you want to define which libraries Frasier is in if you, because that's what's going to be used to inject those title cards in there. We hit add. 
I think it's just gonna, by the default configuration page, it's going to just say, oh, you know, the card type should be default, which in our case is standard card type. There is a tutorial on the Title Card Maker website where he, he does walk you through kind of, okay, create some templates and all that. Um, and templates are just um, essentially a custom configurations for series and it can be applied to like more than one series. And templates can have filters on them and all the conditions of the filters must be true for the template to apply. Um, but again, it, it, it's again, you can have a multiple temp, multiple templates to a series or episode, but the effective template will be the first one whose filter conditions are all satisfied. So in the tutorial for title card maker, Colin recommends two types of templates, tier zero and tier one. The name is slightly misleading because you, you know, in, when I was a newcomer, look at it, I think, okay, tier zero, tier one, you know, can they be applied at the same time or what? I know what's going on here, but the way it was explained to me is it's more of like, you can have multiple templates applied to the same series. If you know, uh, you know, give or take kind of if, if certain seasons are special. So the example Colin gave me was Dr. Who, right? How every season is like, you know, well, not every season, but every other two or three seasons, you know, the doctor, uh, he, he uh, you know, he changes out <laughs> and he dies and he transforms into a woman or, you know, a random person. And so you can define templates with filters and the filters usually look like this. So the filter filters are made up of three things, an argument, uh, operation, um, and then, of course, it's basically the, the value. So the argument being season number, operation equals greater than, less than, is, but isn't really sort of thing. And the reference being one, true, false, less than three, things like this, right? Very straightforward kind of what you'd expect. We have various filters. So you can filter by series name, series year, number of seasons, series library names. Okay. Can I can already kind of think about some cool stuff that you can do with that. Um, series logo. I'm not really too sure. Again, the, the nice part about title card maker and, and, you know, uh, Colin is that he's very supportive, you know, to everybody he's very, you know, your response to every question essentially. And, and, and really there's people and members on there that will, respond to questions and if you need explanation they'll, they'll explain it to you but really what templates are doing is you're adding a condition you're saying hey listen if the season number is less than two right so this is something i did as my first tutorial i i, I just followed it through i said if it's less than two and this is where you can start really doing some stuff with it right you can add extra so we'll talk about that in a little bit but you can change like the certain card type or you know if if you don't want to use the card default you can define a custom font if if the card type supports the custom font that is and i do believe that not all card types support custom fonts necessarily so that may or may not work um so card types again if we check and you know i i I might get into it really, but card types are essentially various, you know, sort of imagine them, them like, you know, templates, really. It's literally just templates, uh, though I'm, I'm tempted not to use that word because I'm thinking of a Photoshop template. But, you know, again, card types are basically what create. It's the design that the card creation is based off of. So title cards and the way that title card maker works is just a little brief overview. It uses something called image magic and image magic is literally the engine that creates the title cards using a Python command line. So notice how this one says blacklist title card dot pi. Not going to get too into that because that will be covered later, but in another video, but again, 
what what's going on here is is that it utilizes image magic and and these title cards basically funnel image magic commands to create a certain look and they can include certain fonts right uh but of course they're different than and this is really where the confusion can also come in as well we'll cover it later but there's also something called blueprints but we're not going to cover that right now just kind of hold on to that at the back of your head but again so certain card types will have you know certain things you can change about them um so but let's see here for example if um if this one so here <clears throat> you know someone just you know i mean there's templates of where you know like someone says you could hide this episode seven up here you know you can choose to hide that under the extras and things like this though that's more considered that's not really an extra now that i think about it it's more of like a hide season high tech sort of extra but you know if they <sighs> there's multiple ways you can do extras but it's a little too advanced for this video. So season titles is really something you hide right here. You could set it to false and this is for like, it so it doesn't show season one, season two on your title card. If the title card has it, this season one, episode one, you could get rid of season one and just have the episode listed. So that's what that means. Hide episode text, again, simply means to just hide uh, the episode text. Again, it could be, episode one, or it could be episode 07, depends how the card type defines it in their Python code. So again, getting a little advanced, but episode text format. So if you say, okay, I don't want it to say episode one, I want it to go, you know, uh, E zero, I mean, you know, there is a way to do episode text format, um, but again, I'm not going to cover that here. What I did was I said for a season number less than two for our real monsters, apply the standard t uh, card type, you know, in the tutorial, in the getting started tutorial, Colin says, okay, I'm going to make you add a, a manual series like better call Saul with a, a tag. And the tag is going to say TCM title or something like this tar TCM title. And the reason is because he's trying to get you to use a tag to do a sync command. We're gonna cover what sync is later, but really, here it is under sonar. So it depends if you're using Plex or sonar. For me, it was sonar. And so again, when you t when you tag something TCM title and you create a job to sync for it, it will only bring whatever has that tag, right? If you define it under sync. Again, so this whole thing, these filters and templates can, you know, these templates can be utilized under the sync. And that's, you know, again, not just sync, but on, in in terms of series, when you're manually adding series. But sync allows you to sync between Sonar or Plex automatically. So it will, the templates shows up two, two places in sync and in the series configuration tab manually, you will see templates. So again, you could go one by one and be like, okay, I want this to have standard and, and you know, but that's really what's happening here. So standard, again, just understand that the standard tag is just saying anything less than two, use the standard. And tier zero, any is just, you know, there is, you know, for, so what I did <clears throat> was, I didn't even add a condition. I just went tinted frame. So obviously if I apply a filter, right? If I apply both of these templates, excuse me, tier one and tier zero, if my show has five seasons and I define the first one to say anything less than two apply the standard and I sync it, it will import with these tiers and give or take whichever one will fail first. So <clears throat> in the tutorial, I'm not sure how he did it, but he did recommend put the one that you think will fail quicker. So I would put tier one first and then tier zero after. So for anything less than season two, it will apply the standard. And of course, what does the standard look like? Well, it looks like this. This is what it will apply. Or wait, no, we can go crazy. Let's go Star Wars. Yeah. So you can kind of get what's going on here. And then for anything that's just not with a filter, right? So there is no filter. So it's always going to be true because there is no condition. 
filters restrict when a template is active. But again, if I there's no restriction, the template's always gonna be active, right? So let's take a look what Tinted does. So Tinted will do, you know, like this. It, it, it's, it blurs it, it adds the logo in there and all this stuff. One of the things that the tutorial wanted you to do was, hey, mess around with the middle element, the middle element of it. So you can kind of just type tinted, uh, well, middle element, and you can use right there, tinted frame, middle element. And so try to give your extras a unique name when you're making them, though that's not in this video. But again, oh wow, and you can look, you can see watched content, unwatched content. I like this. I like this a lot. And let's do our real monsters. What does that look like? Ah, oh, our real monsters. Look at that. Okay. So anyways, fix my card. It was just a little issue, little tinsy issue with having defined a property as none on the card master base class. Anyways. Um, so once again, you know, Templates will help assign certain settings to series. And really, it's really util useful for, again, in the example of Doctor Who, where you have a different doctor every different episode, you can assign certain different card types on import to those particular seasons within a show. So it's a quick way to batch process uh, card type differences within the same show and it can be applied to multiple series or or you know to multiple number of episodes so again that's the whole point with tears and and it's a very niche thing it's not utilized often so don't get too caught up on tiered templates that is not just tiers now there is something called blueprints and what are blueprints? Well, okay, this is where it can get kind of like Inception, you know, and uh, a dream and a dream and a dream. But in a blueprint isn't just a pre-made set of card configurations, but it can include the the special fonts, okay? It can include the fonts, uh, and it can also include m multiple templates inside of it, you know, so then, you know, it's, it, it can be kind of like, wait a minute, if templates are, you know, like what the heck's going on here? If templates themselves, if there's card type that draws out the, the card based on design and then there's templates that can help me apply those with filters, then what the, what the hell is a blueprint? <laughs> so a blueprint is, it, it from my understanding, and I'm going to put it in the description below and I could kind of clarify, but blueprints are essentially for card configurations. Okay. So they're card configurations in terms of stuff that you can do here. So this is like stuff that probably someone already got a look and a feel themselves and they, and they, they genuinely like that look and feel already but again you know it's it's like a pre-configured look and it's the way it's defined is it's an importable pre-created set of configurations for the specific series but again so it's it's once again it's just it can have templates within it that will apply a certain way for the series. So if someone else decided, hey, I like what this template's doing and how it's applying a certain title card, right? And so, again, it has the fonts, the templates, the series, uh, and episode customizations. Though series and episode customizations to me are, um, again, part of the pre-made card configurations. But at the end of the day, you can export it as a zip or you could search for it on the show. So if I search for Azure, I'm like, well, is there any blueprint? Damn, there's no blueprint. So 
Um, one of the things I'm curious if it exports is if if the blueprint consists of, you know, yeah. So I don't see anything super crazy here. Again, remember blueprints is essentially a look and it can have the fonts, uh, the specific things in a JSON file here extras, whatever, and have you, and templates. So it can be utilized on other series, but really blueprints only imports to one show. So if there's no blueprint, there's no blueprint. You're not gonna be able to take another blueprint unless you really hack up the JSON and import it into this thing. So that's what a blueprint is. And so the best way I can explain it, so once again, to overview, TCM, primarily takes you know you know these card types and they're designed with individual settings which can be customized and processed through image magic command through a python script and then keep in mind all these cards are their own container right i don't want to use a docker term here but they're essentially their own thing and again each card has its own certain je ne sais quoi, right? A certain feature and all this stuff. And, you know, whether it's it can support kanji text or, oh, this one has like the logo up, the, you know, this one can show the logo up here and all this stuff. And, you know, again, so someone might say, okay, well, how come there isn't a card type that you can create that gives you every single option under the sun? And again, the reason for that would be is because it's very, very complex. And again, what do we mean by complex? Well, we mean that, you know, already to create just one car type, it's it requires a lot of image magic trickery and, and you know, all this stuff. And 99% of the choosers, 99% of users pick a card because of a certain general aesthetic, okay? And so it doesn't really make sense to let's say have a colored logo from one card, right? And then the comic, there's like a, let's say like a, let's say, oh, I want, uh, oh, let me get the, the overlay from Star Wars, you know, in terms of that. And then let me get the, you know, I'm thinking, let me get the something a little more that yeah let me get the border from he this one and have the border support for this one and then let me get the you know let me get the uh let me get the uh the the play button from retro card uh, in, all in one you know sort of thing again it's there's no one general card that makes you again there's there's functions that are shared amongst these cards cards really do have to be created and that's why this will probably be another video that i'm just gonna do i'm no expert in image magic and i'm far from an expert in card type creation and python scripting but i'm just gonna cover the card that i did so that that's blueprints for you right there and a brief overview of why there's all these different little elements for certain card types and kind of a general overview of what what is a card, right? What is a template? Uh, what is a blueprint? Uh, you know, uh, what is, um, you know, eh, of the nomenclature of title card manager. Now, let me show you an example. So I have our real monsters here, okay? And I have it pointed to the Plex library, so it will load these in. And I'm gonna say, okay, let's, uh, let me, Choose the card type, uh, real monsters. Let me do color red. You know, I wanna do red and that's it. And I save it, right? If we go under episode data, you will, it will scrape, you know, your sonar, right? And sonar will use whatever agent it uses, TV database, right? Or probably TV database, I don't know but it uses the TV database API and it gets all these episodes. And then from here, <clears throat> you, 
you want to grab the source file. So if you go under files, and yes, it, it will automatically grab it as a scheduled task, so you don't have to worry about that. I didn't grab all these manually, but you can manually browse them here, upload your own, or you can just uh, horizontally mirror. I don't know what the point of that one was, but when you click here, you can choose. So it'll, it'll go to Plex or the movie database on the right. Obviously, I'm gonna do Plex because Plex is grabbing it from my episode. I think, or maybe, maybe not from the, maybe this is both the, actually these both are from the movie database, but let's just, we pick this one and then when we pick it, it'll download and it'll show this season one, episode one. Don't worry about this name really. And then we go episode data, create card right here like this. It's going to create the card after we download the source image, we hit refresh. And there's the card. I mean, I know you kind of already saw it before, but pretend that wasn't there. Uh, and then here's the card again. So if I want to do episode two, create the card, there's episode two. So it applies the specific card type that we chose under card configuration, in this case, Star Wars, to that. Now, remember, under card configuration, there are all these overrides, right? You can change out the font. Uh, you can do all these, you know, change the color of alter the stroke with one little disclaimer and every almost all the car types do support the, these config these custom overrides under card configuration but it may be possible you might run into a car that you know the author of the card type may not have programmed that in or perhaps didn't program it in correctly uh which is which is possible and then you're noticing things aren't passing to your card type so in probably the card type video, I'll kind of mention very briefly the things that happened to me in terms of I created a custom card type for Re uh, real monsters, but anytime I was changing anything here, it wasn't making a lick of a difference because my code was wrong. The sync is really for importing. Okay. It's to import things. It's not to sync it out. It's not an outbound. It's an inbound. So. For example, if we look at here, editing the testing for sonar, here we chose, remember earlier that I mentioned there was the guide, and you guys should read the guide as well, but there's a guide where he takes Better Call Saul, he, he slaps TCM test on it in sonar, and then you apply the, you know, the template tiers, and then you import it, and you can add all these sort of things, these sort of filters and certain exclusions and if the series type is an anime you know you can exclude all of the anime don't bring in the anime stuff if you don't want to uh I, I i'm not entirely sure what the reason for that be but again i'm sure it has a good reason then once that's saved you're going to go over to this arrow to sync immediately alternatively if you go under settings and scheduler and this is not the default view you have to click this is this is what the default view will look like so we'll hit yes just so I can show you guys the default view so that's what it looks like pretty straightforward the default view is about loading the title cards downloading posters downloading the logos creating missing title cards and backing up the database I did enable advanced scheduler just because I do want to see everything and uh, you know so that you can really see all the cron and then the schedule tab switches to the cron job so Again, remember it's it's a cron job, so there's there's a website where you can kind of check out what what it is and what what it's doing. But here's a description of the cron job: at zero minutes, past the hour, every four hours. So that's that's another thing. So the scheduler, it the sync automatically will run all defined syncs as part of this task description, and so. You don't really have to immediately sync if you don't want to. And it even tells you here, all syncs will run in one hour, 12 minutes. So if I go under the task manager, what do we got here? We got one hour, 12 minutes. Once that's sync, you'll have a bunch of series here with pre-applied templates already ready to go. And then you can check it out before, before the scheduler, which will essentially load all the title cards into MB Jellyfin or Plex. And then that's going to be in three hours. So something to consider and once again let's take a look on the uh the plex side of it now on the plex side of it you can see here look at that i mean come on 
This is the Star Wars theme that I apply just to season one. Incredible. Now, one interesting thing is you might be wondering, okay, well, I was just testing it out. How do I change these title cards? Well, it's simple. You just go here, delete the title cards. It says deleted two cards, but you're gonna be like, but hmm, Michael, that's weird. You have a lot more than two cards on this library. Well, that's true because this was from an earlier, uh, basically an earlier title card sync that I didn't show on the tutorial where it generated it for the entire seasons. Now, one of the things that I want to mention if I actually click this pencil icon and go to poster is if you take a quick look, you could see my custom title card right there. You see this? If I click save here, you see this right here? You see that? That's my custom title card. But it's also still there because I made a tutorial one. So it's in a way, this is something that's a side note, but this program, like any programs that utilize the Plex API, do add bloat. When they do things behind Plex's, you know, back essentially to as a modification of Plex to do cool things like create title cards, it creates something called bloat. So Plex cannot remove it. So I can't go in here and hit poster and hit, you know, I can't delete this. They will keep stacking. So you have two options. Be very careful when you're generating and syncing the title cards. Or your other option is to run Plex image cleanup which is covered in a completely different video, which uh, you could watch there. Plex uh, Meta Manager, go to Plex Image Cleanup. Not only does that help for the tool known as Plex Meta Manager, which is, um, you know, not gonna mention too much about that here, but it also assists in removing any bloated images that aren't used, simple as that. So you can always run Plex Image Cleanup as well. With all this being done, you know, all the, all this fancy, you know, title card stuff. Let's take a look at Frasier. Did it generate anything? I, I, nope, it just downloaded all the images. Let's generate one for Frasier. And there's one for Frasier using the standard title card. It's just, again, very cool, very cool program. And it just allows you, you can do crazy things, right? Like with me, I did one just for a, a custom card type, just for our real monsters. So could I certainly apply that card type to a Frasier, I wonder? Yeah, of course. All I have to do is just click card type, hit our real monsters, hit save, hit episode data, hit generate, hit files, hit view. And all of a sudden we're seeing uh, the play again status, which which I set as you know the default, but the watch status. But again, we're seeing that here, the good son, right? Why is Grumble here? So there's a lot of cool things that you can do. You could do a card for that, but really the the general use case is, you pick one, and you, at least what I've seen in the community is they pick one title card, and they just use it across all of their library. And so there's a beautiful standardized you know, kind of a fancy, sleek appearance to it. So anyways, guys, that is Title Card Maker by Colin Heiss. Go ahead and check it out and support him. Great, great program. Must have, in my opinion, if you're in getting into really serious server customization and adding the bells and the shiny whistles to it. So once again, guys, catch you next time. Hope you found this video helpful. Take care.